Howdy y'all, it's your favorite trainer with a belt buckle. Today we're going to talk about why carbs make you fat. If you're not familiar with Show Up Fitness, we teach personal trainers. It's where great trainers are made. The book, How to Become a Successful Personal Trainer. We will help you get certified if you want to get NASM, ACE, or become a nutritionist. We got you covered. So let's talk about getting fat from carbs. So it's going to be a two-part video. First part's going to be discussing the common foods that we're eating and then we're going to go to a zoom and I'll do some calculations for you because we teach trainers to get become nutritionists as well so let's take your average American this is what they're going to have for and this would be like a healthy breakfast we're going to have a banana and we're going to have some high protein oatmeal this is 220 calories this is roughly 80 so 300 calories and then for snack, two hours later, we have a Cliff Bar, which is organic and healthy. And then we have some applesauce, which is amazing, 350 calories. So right here, we have 300, 650 calories. Person B, they're going to have three eggs for breakfast with some bacon and some cheese. They're going to go keto. Keto is the best way to go. So I'm going to show you why keto in a low-carb diet works. Person B, they're going to get roughly three eggs, 200 calories, ounce of cheese, 100 calories, and then two pieces of bacon, roughly 100 calories. That's 500. That's going to keep them full for so much longer than this group. Carbs are great. We can use this for fuel. We can use protein for fuel. We can use fat for fuel. We can use macronutrients for fuel. But what happens is the sustainability in being satiated. We don't get that very much from here. There's a little bit of fiber and protein, and, and protein technically on the, on the satiating index is fairly high. I don't know about you, but personally, I don't get very full from protein. When I have this, I'm going to be hungry in the next, in the next hour or so. So when your clients go really high carb and there's not that much protein, the problem is sustainability and how we handle being hangry. So what are you going to do? If there's temptation, if Betsy from work brings in a cupcake, are you going to have that cupcake? And if you are hungry because of your high-carb diet, this isn't very satiating. Person B, high protein, the likelihood of them, uh, I'm okay inside, so I don't want to have any because I'm not freaked out about food right now. And so it's really important to understand at the end of the day, it's calories in, calories out and understanding the body mass equation. So we're gonna flip on over to the Zoom, we're gonna do some calculations, and I'm gonna to continue to show you the value of understanding the fundamentals of nutrition, the law of thermodynamics, the first law, what a calorie is, and that's what we teach at our internship. We're online, in person, San Diego, Los Angeles, Austin, and we're back. It's your favorite trainer with a belt buckle coming at you from a Zoom call now. So I want to be able to do some calculations and walk you through the value of being an educated trainer. So the average shitty nutritionist, they're going to talk about nutrition within their workouts or trainer. We don't want you to do that. As a nutritionist, I will train my client Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and they have to come in another day, either Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday, or on the, the day of the training, and it's going to be a paid session. I charge $250 per hour to do a nutritional consultation. Yes, and guess what? We're going to go to lunch or dinner, and you're buying. I do this regularly because I set the expectations with my clients. I do not talk about nutrition other than eating more protein, consuming more fruits and vegetables and drink more water. They will then do a food log with photos and then we're gonna go to lunch or dinner and I'm gonna get into the behavior, the lifestyle, the psychology behind their eating. So carbs are not bad. This is where society really screws this up. So we're gonna take the example that we were looking at earlier. So someone is consuming 2,000 calories. Roughly 10% of the calories are coming from protein. And that's going to be about 50 grams. 50 grams times it by four equals 200 calories. Now how do you get that? Every gram of protein is four calories. Every gram of carbohydrates is four calories. Every gram of 
pro, uh, fat is nine calories. So you're getting 10% of your diet from the person on the left where we're looking at the oatmeal, the banana, the organic cliff bar and applesauce, which we'll make reference to in a second. Then we got person B who's consuming things like there's little packets of nuts, these are 200 calories. The pure protein, I love these for breakfast, 170 calories, 35 grams of protein. We had three to four eggs for breakfast, save three eggs. We had two slices of bacon, some cheese, put some salsa on there. So what happens with the protein-based person is they're going to be full longer. But here's the big thing that we don't look at. Let's say that we're getting roughly 40% of our diet and protein on this side. So that's going to be 800 calories coming from protein, which would be 200 grams, 200 grams of protein. That's a lot bad for your kidneys. No, it's not. Shut up. So understand that if you were to have kidney issues, sure, consuming protein probably wouldn't be optimal, but that's going to be something the dietitian is going to be taking care of, not us. We can probably get by on consuming more protein. It's better for everything within the organism. So here's the science. So person A is burning roughly 200 calories. What do you mean burning? How does that happen? Thermal effect of food. If you're not familiar with the thermal effect of food, also referred to as DIT, which is diet induced induced thermogenesis. We burn more calories by consuming more protein. Thermal effect of food, thermal effect of protein is gonna be about 30%. So over here, we would be burning roughly 600 calories. Look at the difference right here. Group B is, is burning an extra 400 calories. That means you're in a 400 calorie deficit more than group A. So if you're two individuals consuming 2000 calories, person A, the banana, the oatmeal, applesauce over here, they're going to be hungrier. Carbs are about 12 to 15%. Fat's really low. I think it's like 5%. When we go to protein, DIT is going to be around 30%, maybe even a little higher, like 32, 35. So you're burning more calories via active transport, breaking down the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and the nitrogen, which is important because fats and carbs don't have nitrogen. That's the main difference between the two when it comes to the structural aspect. And so you're going to be creating a 400 calorie deficit from the keto slash high protein, high fat group. And so the, it's so easy to understand why carbs are bad because this group over here can consume more and they're going to be full. And then what happens is this trainer or nutritionist or whoever it is says, this stuff's bad for you. You can't be having carbs. Take out this right here applesauce in the cliff bar, it's bad for you. Replace it with protein. You have a protein shake. So we just replaced 300 calories with 170. I'm going to be more full. I'm going to burn more calories from this as well. And typically what you find, and here's another interesting thing that we do not address, the left side of the equation, the high carb group, they typically would do more car uh, cardio for fat loss. Where the keto folk, those are your CrossFitters, are in there getting jack lifting weights. Now, I'm not citing on A or B. I'm just presenting what science currently says and trying to find an avenue that's best for your clients. I think it's really more of marrying everything. Yes, we can consume more protein, but if we start taking out the carbs, bananas are bad for you. Look at the brown spots. That's sugar. You're going to fucking die. Shut up. So many stupid things that people say today. Sugar is bad for you. Um, all this is bad for you. We don't teach and educate individuals on quote unquote what bad even is. So the fact that we're it's so much easier to consume more on this left side. One little packet of oatmeal, by the way, if you don't just open this little fucker and throw it in your mouth, it's delicious. It's like a cheat code. You're playing Mario brother and you got, you got your little uh, magical star. It's amazing. You don't have to wait time getting the hot water. No, just throw that shit in your mouth. I'm not joking. It's the best shit in the world. I tell my clients to do it all the time. It's a little hack. But this side, typically you're consuming a lot of breads and pastas, calorically dense foods. So as we're talking about this in class today, we go over the first thing that we address. All of the interns are nutritionists. Ready for this? I buy 
the power of show of fitness and now giving you the, the title of nutritionist. You can call yourself that now. You don't need to go take a fucking class to get certified or go do NASM, this certain, this certain. ISSN, ISSN's actually legit. I was looking at precision nutrition. Don't get more certs. You don't need them. Understand the fundamentals. Communicate with your clients and get into their mindset. Why do you think a burger is bad for you? Let's talk about that. It's not that the bun and the meat, bad meat and the cheese is bad. It's the behavior that typically goes along with this. You're going to have fries. You're going to have a couple of beers. You have a shake. And then it continues on for the next meal and the next meal. So our mindset gets in a really shitty spot. So what we teach to show up fitness is understanding the body mass equation. So I will write this stuff out in front of my clients all the time. And what it does is it just gives you so much credibility because your clients are like, I didn't realize there's an actual mathematical science part of it. Yeah, there is. So let's take a look at the body mass equation. So it's absolutely 100% calories in, calories out. That's what we need to identify first. Telling someone to create a deficit is like telling someone who's drowning to swim. It doesn't do much unless you educate them behind their choices. So let's swipe out the bar for the protein shake. This is going to keep you full. There's more protein in here. This has nine grams. This is great if you're a marathon runner or you're about to go do a long ass workout for six hours, you need some fuel. But most of us are not that active to need that many carbohydrates. I'm not saying carbs are bad, but it's just easier to consume high amounts of them. And that's just going to translate typically into not being that full. And so we look at calories in, calories out, but then these other important factors are so important to address. Sleep. Did you know getting two days in a row of six and a half hours or less of sleep, you're dropping your T levels by about 50%. Your testosterone is to go get out there and do shit. Let's go conquer the world. And now you're afraid. Oh my God, the world's such a bad place. I'm so delicate. So your T levels are just nothing. The typical T levels for a dude, 300 to 1200 units per deciliter. For females, it's 30 to 90 units per deciliter. So we typically have a lot more than girls. But if we drop that in half, we don't have the, the go out there and do shit mentality. We sit back and we just, oh, life sucks. Those ants, automatic negative thoughts. Stress is really important. How do you handle stress? If your boss says you have a week to bring in a million dollars of revenue, and you're freaked out, you go home, you drink a bunch. So because you're drinking, you're now not sleeping optimally. They go hand in hand. Maybe you're going to have a bunch of snacks around the house. How's your mindset? Are you fucking David Goggins? Are you going to go out there and work eight hours in a day and just get out there and get after it? Probably not. The average client's going to do 30 to 60 minutes. So we got to educate them behind their choices. Tough love does not work very well for the average person. When a client tells me they can handle tough love, that's usually a red flag that they can't. I don't, I am very big into tough love, but I don't do it a lot with my clients. I'm a chameleon. I can always tell when Frank or Abby comes in, they're just a delicate little snowflake. I need to be more empathetic with them. I can't tell them, just fucking work out. You got to get after it harder. Wake up at 4 a.m. and go for an hour walk. That's not going to work for the average person. Hydration is really important. How do you handle hunger? The next time you're hungry, boom, high five, get fired up because you're burning fat. That's not the mentality that most people take. I'm hungry. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm getting my head. I'm hangry. I got to eat. I got to eat. And then we power back 7,000 crackers and chips and all this bullshit that we don't need. Eat like an adult, not the little fat kid from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. If you have a metabolic disease, I love working with you. If you have a thyroid issue, if you have type 1 or type 2 diabetes, because you're working with a registered dietitian or a proper physician, when in doubt, refer out. I'm not going to tell my diabetic client, type 2, which is reversible, that they need to have A, B, C, and D to consume. Not in my realm. That's with the dietitian. If it has to do with anorexia or bulimia, it's not in our wheelhouse. We're not psychologists. We're great trainers and great nutritionists, but we do not address anything that has uh, any client who has any type of metabolic disease. 
It does factor in. It's not nearly as much as people say. I have a slow metabolism. No, you don't. You have a fucking eating problem. That's what you have. Tough pill to swallow. Again, tough love. I don't do this with my clients, but that's what's happening. We're consuming way too many calories and no one's holding you accountable. Uh, Betsy, you just ate uh, 15 Oreo cookies as she has 15 more. No, but they're organic or we don't even track it. I forgot about those. Any client that tells you they're eating 1,200 or 1,500 calories and they're not losing weight, guess what? They're not eating 1,200 or 1,500 calories. That's the first law of thermodynamics. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So if you really are eating that amount and you're not losing weight, it's because you're not. A metabolic disease, maybe 5% you factor in for weight gain. It's not nearly as much as people put it out there to be. Environmental factors are huge. If you're sitting at a desk in a workspace, and I got to use some different words. Um, Jimmy comes over and he has his homemade tamales from his mom. And she's an amazing cook. You're going to try one. And so it tastes great. You don't want to offend them. And so what about the cupcakes? What about these drinks? And a lot of corporate spaces today, startups, they have vending machines. They have snacks all over the place. So when you're stressed out, hence a factor, you're going to go in there and have something that's easily accessible. You throw some nuts in your mouth. You throw some chips in your mouth. Before you know it, you get an extra five to 700 calories per day. I had a client who would go to, who worked at Netflix and he would, he called a pull. And one pull of nuts was 250 calories. He said, it wouldn't be, it'd be a pretty average day to have four or five pulls because he was so stressed out. Whoosh, goes in a little cup and you just snack on it. That's an extra 1,250 calories. Guess where that goes? Right around your midsection. Oh, it's because I, in my midlife crisis, it's just, it's my hormones. Hormones do play a role, but they're not the reason why you put on 30 pounds. It's because you're eating too much. Genetics play a role, but I mean, obviously, if you are the, the Williams sisters, you have better genetics when it comes to your sport. Same with the Manning brothers. It's not the reason why you have that shape, the ectomorph, endomorph, shut up. Where does this stuff come from today? We follow blindly. We're like sheep. That's where smart trainers come in. The fitness industry is saturated. Yes with idiotic trainers. You do not need more certs. You don't need more pieces of paper. You need to really understand the fundamentals. I'll show you a slide from today's class and we were discussing the misconceptions behind all of the keto's the way to go. Milk's bad, sugar's bad. Uh, you gotta fast, anabolic window. We are educated trainers. Last little thing I wanted to show you from Eric Helms. If you don't know who Eric is, he's one of the, the greats to follow, PhD. We need to get our education and information from those that are qualified. And doctors are not qualified in nutrition. We need to find professors and people like Eric. So when we look at the, the, the weight, fat loss, we don't have a weight loss problem. It's very easy to lose weight. We have a sustainability. And how do we sustain it? We got to go to the behavior and lifestyle. That's the fundamental of the whole pyramid. Address the energy equation, calories in and calories out. If you want to do some macro calculations, as we just took a look at, increasing your protein will have the greatest and easiest effect on your waistline. Micronutrients, we don't talk about that as trainers or as nutritionists. You can suggest for your clients just to make sure to get a well-rounded diet. Nutrient timing, I talk about that with my athletes. Supplements, no, you don't need supplements. You need to do more pushaways for your abs. Pushaways, what? Push the food away, just push it away. Boom, 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 boom. That's how you lose weight. And just let it be known as we end for today. Cliff bars are great. Applesauce is great. Protein packet, I love the oatmeal. Love it on the run, it's great. Bananas are great. There's no such, there's no such thing as bad food. Only cottage cheese and yellow, yellow Skittles. You're a fucking psycho if you like that stuff. Just joking. I make it a joke with my clients because there is no such thing as bad food. We need to educate our clients, get into their mindset behind their food choices and help get them onto the right path. If you have any questions, want to go through our internship, we have classes that are every single day. They're online, they're recorded, so you really don't have an excuse. I will save you so much money by not wasting it and doing a precision nutrition or the next coolest sports nutritionist class. Invest $100 and you're going to learn the fundamentals and then you're going to be able to help your clients and most importantly, get paid for it. That's our goal at Show Up Fitness. We want our trainers to make more money 
by working less. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're online, we're in person in Los Angeles, San Diego, Austin, October 4th, two month internships, classes are every day, hands-on learning. If you can't make it to the in-person, we have weekend seminars. And in two days, you will learn more than any certification that's out there, guarantee it. Train where the belt buckle says so. Have a great day, y'all. Make sure to read my book, How to Become a Successful Trainer. It goes through the same with nutrition.